a couple times in the absence of glucose and in the absence of glutamine. So what happens if both are present? Like, Yeah, sure. Yeah. Well, the fatty acids aren't going to be used. But however, fatty acids are uncoupling it. What they can do is they can uncouple the mitochondria. You know what that means? They're going to, that means the tumor cells, fatty acids could potentially enhance tumor cell growth by upregulating the use of glucose and glutamine, the two fermentable fuels. So fatty acids themselves are not being utilized, but they can stimulate tumor cells through an uncoupling mechanism, forcing a more aggressive and a more active fermentation metabolism. So again, as long as glucose and glutamine are in the microenvironment, cancer cells can survive. If you take that away, even if the fatty acids are there, there's no fermentable fuels, the cancer cells will die. Mm. Um, now on to glutamine, I've heard, again, for someone that doesn't know, glutamate versus glutamine, what's the difference and where is glutamine produced and, and utilized in the body? Well, glutamine is the most abundant amino acid in our body. If you look at the bloodstream, glutamine is like 5, 0.5 millimolar, 500 micromolar. It's the most abundant amino acid. We need glutamine for a lot of things. It runs our immune system. It keeps the gut healthy. It plays an important role in the urea cycle. So glutamine is, they consider it non-essential because our body can make it from glucose. So we make glucose. Glucose can be used to synthesize glutamate. And glutamate can be uh, synthesized into glutamine from glutamine synthetase. So that's why they call it a non-essential amino acid. But for cancer, it becomes an absolutely essential amino acid. So that's why. So it's always there in abundance and it's always available. That's why diet, you can't really lower glutamine with diet. And, and the cancer cells need the glutamine. So there's no diet. We found and others have found that you... You really need to use drugs. But when you use the drugs to target glutamine, you have to be very careful because, uh, as I said, the same fuel is needed for our immune system and our gut. If you're too aggressive in targeting glutamine, then you're going to cause a lot of problems with the gut, health of the gut cell, making people sick. Also, inhibiting our immune system uh, from doing its function and picking up dead corpses, uh, dead tumor cells. So that's why we developed the press pulse therapeutic strategy for managing cancer, because you can press glucose way down. The body the body basically doesn't need glucose, except for a few red bloods, and they can survive on the most minimal level of glucose. So you lower the glucose with diet or even some small amounts of glucose inhibiting drugs, glycolysis inhibitors, but you really need to use a drug to target glutamine. But if you do it too aggressively and don't understand the biology of the problem, then you could harm the patient. So so we do pulsing. So we just hit them for a short period of time, pull off the glutamine targeting drug, allow the system to recover, and then we, we hit them again. It's, it's a slow, degraded process by which you can gradually eliminate the tumor cells and you move this patient through the system. So that, nothing is done too aggressively. It's a slow degrading of the tumor while enhancing the health and vitality of the normal cells because they can burn ketones. This is how we all survived in the Paleolithic period, we were all in some level of nutritional ketosis because there weren't availability of high carbohydrate foods in abundance in our in environment. So we're just Wait, so okay. So so what happens um, if you knock down glutamine for how long does it become a problem? And again, what are what are the uh, sequelae? What are the the problems that happen if it's kept down for too long? Yeah, well, you you start getting immune system problems. You start getting gut issues. You know, your microbiome gets blasted. So you start hammer. You start making a, a person unhealthy because you're inhibiting some of the key physiological urea cycle. As I said, I mean, this is mm. these are linked. So you can't be too aggressive in targeting glutamine. Now you have to realize that for short periods of time, under certain conditions, we we use glutamine. Like for example, burn patients, patients that are burned, where bacteria now can enter their body in large numbers because the skin is a shield against invading bacteria. But when individuals are burned, you have to give them very high doses of glutamine because it's the immune system that will kill the bacteria as they enter the body. So we need to give very high doses of glutamine under those under those conditions. We're not taking it away now. We're adding it. But if we add mm. glutamine to a cancer patient, you run the risk of driving his cancer faster, especially yeah. if there's glucose available. So again, none of this is really complicated it's just that uh, you really need to understand systems physiology and a normal energy metabolism. You need to understand evolutionary biology. And once you, once you understand these fundamental issues, then managing cancer in an effective, logical way becomes much less of a problem than it is that what I just said is basically unknown to the majority of people working in the oncology field.